I've got three perfect summer tops to share with you made with a really nice free pattern. Sneak peek! You can always make small changes to a pattern to make it fit like you want it to and that is exactly what I'm going to show you today so keep watching. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. Today I have a free pattern to share with you. I am always looking out for nice free patterns. I usually jump on the ones that are designed for woven fabrics because I am always more drawn to those. This pattern is called the Wide Strap Maxi Dress and it is designed by an Australian pattern company called LB Textiles. So this brand also has other patterns in their catalogue but they did do a collaboration with Peppermint magazine to design this dress for the magazine and it's free for anyone to download though Peppermint magazine is requesting a small donation if possible. It is voluntary of course but you can see that on the website how you can easily donate and download this pattern. You can still download it without doing the donation. I got this pattern months ago. This was issue 44, so it would have been a few months ago already. Lovely design. When I look at the pictures, um, I see it says maxi there, of course, but my eyes sort of like blur out the rest of the dress. I just want to see the top part because that is where I see potential sometimes just to make a shorter dress or just make a top. I always say any dress can also be a top. Uh, so just the fact that it says that it's a maxi dress does not make me ignore the pattern because I know I don't have to make it a maxi dress. I have said before maxi styles aren't really my style and believe me I have tried and I'm not going to start sewing things to not wear them. So I know I don't wear maxi things so I'm not going to sew them. I'll put some line art so you can see here and I need to point out that the line art does not show a center front seam although the center front seam is all over the instructions and the dress does have a center front seam I don't know why it's not in the line art it is sort of semi fitted at the bust ish it's got very wide straps it's got a facing that is top stitched all the way around and at the back you have an elastic casing that brings it in at the back and going down the dress you will see an interesting type of pocket entrance in seam pockets and then because it's maxi it goes all the way down and there are these little slide slits there. In the pattern of course you will find fabric recommendations and actually the product photos you can clearly see that this dress is made in linen so they do recommend mid-weight wovens like linen and cotton. It's always personal preference you know you can go ahead and so with the fabrics that they recommend, just keeping in mind that linen, 100% linen or cotton does not drape. So <laughs> this dress is not a slim fit dress. It's quite loose, it's quite boxy. And for the maxi style, it has some sort of cocoon type shape with the slits there. It's very wide at the hips. So a fabric that is structured like linen is just gonna make everything poof out at the bottom and it's just gonna have a lot of volume actually which is something that a lot of people might want to have in their dresses. I know it's something that does not suit me and that I don't feel comfortable in. So I have made three and I have chosen rayon, just 100% rayon, very lightweight and drapey for two of them. And on the other one, I've chosen rayon twill. I think if you were going to make a dress, either full length or just above the knee or whatever length, I think rayon twill is a nice fabric for a dress because it is heavier weight, it's still very nice and drapey, but it won't be so, so transparent and like too light. But for a top, I think 100% rayon, the lightweight type would be perfect if you just want to make it short. And I have to point out, I've made all of mine short. I have not made a dress with this pattern. I just have made them to hit mid hip. The sizing for this pattern is not made traditionally with numbers or anything like that. So. The sizes available are from A to J. So you'll see a size chart with body measurements, finished garment measurements, but with those references, size A, size B, like that. And the largest size, J, has a bust of 51 and a half inches and a hip of 54 and a half inches. Those are the body measurements. But this style is very, very generous in the positive ease. There's a lot of positive ease around the bust, about seven inches, and at the hips, 
16 inches. So there's a lot of space there. This pattern is designed for a two inch difference from the high bust and the full bust. That means that in sewing that is a B cup, it doesn't have cup sizes and it does clearly state there that it's designed for a woman of five foot seven in height. So, you know, I am a little bit taller than that. So I'm not thinking about length adjustments for this pattern. Uh, specifically because it's a maxi and I don't intend to sew a maxi dress. So length adjustments are out of the picture. Maybe the bust will need some tweaking, but mainly in where that bust that is. I'm not concerned about the circumference that it's not going to fit me because I am a C cup. It's a loose design. I don't think it's that sensitive to cup sizes. My body falls into a size G, but looking at the finished garment measurements, I just decided to sew a size F, which is one size smaller than the size G. And I'm very glad I did. Whenever I look at a pattern, I'm always impressed at the beautiful photography, which is the case for this dress. If you look at the website, the gorgeous color of that linen. I love that terracotta color. And I'm just trying to not get distracted by the beauty of the photography and actually trying to see how this dress fits on the model there. And I noticed straight away that the neckline is very low. I can see that the straps are very long. I'm not sure if there is a bra being worn on these pictures because it looks so low cut here on the front, like very low cut. I know with the type of bra that I wear, everything would be seen. And especially on the back, the, the horizontal strap that goes across your back um, hits at a certain level on my back. And I'm sure that if I made the pattern just as is, um, I would not be comfortable. I like to have more coverage here on my chest and especially here around this arm side area and at the back. So I know these things can be modified. This is true for any pattern that you see that has this type of neckline, whether it be a dress or a cami pattern. You know, you can adjust the length of the straps, you can raise the neckline, you, of course you need to modify the darts. And it's not just about making the straps shorter. You can see that there are side bust darts there. If I just make the straps really, like really short and bring all this up, you're going to end up with darts above your bust. So you need to think about that too. <laughs> So in my opinion, these styles do need a non-wearable muslin made. I would not go ahead and try and make a muslin out of fabric I like because there's a really high chance that I'm not gonna get it right. I do always make changes that I can on the pattern first. In this case, just eyeballing it, I had no idea of where the bust point was on this dress because it's not marked. Um, I just thought I'm gonna just lower that side bust up by one and a half inches and go from there. Sew up a version, see how it fits on my body, see how much I need to raise, how much I need to shorten those straps, where the, that hits when I'm wearing this non-wearable muslin and go from there. What you're going to see in Up Close and So Personal are the pattern changes I made on the paper pattern, those darts. That is the only change I made prior to making my non-wearable muslin. Once I had my ugly non-wearable muslin made, I went ahead and altered that neckline, did a few little changes, drafted a new facing, and I'm going to show you how to sew the straps and the casing for the elastic at the back. I think the way I'm doing it is way easier than the pattern instructions have you do it. So there will be some sewing in there, so let's hop into there. I'll show you what I've done to the back to raise it. I thought it was just too low on my back. I had the danger of showing my bra straps. So this is straight across. It doesn't have any shape. I just added one and a quarter inches there. And I'm not making a dress, obviously. You will find different notches here on the side seams. This notch and then that notch just below where it says wide maxi stress. This is where I want my hem to be. So I drew a straight line across that notch here at the center. I dropped it by an inch and then just did a nice curve there. If you just cut it straight across, it, the hem's gonna look strange. So I just dropped it by an inch and curved it. Now, because I added here one and a quarter inches where this will unite to the front, I've added the same there, but I can't just add the whole same amount like that. That's just too much. I didn't want that higher on the front. So I did add to the front, just half an inch. And then from this point here, I just sort of blended the line from the half and then ended up with the one and a quarter. So these two will match. 
there on the side and the bus that <laughs> I knew I just by eyeballing dropped it initially by one and a half inches so that's been dropped the bus point was like up there and now it's there and then when I tried it on I didn't actually drop it more I just changed the angle so this is the original angle of the dart finishing there and I just kept the same there and just directed it a little lower even half an inch lower here on the center I had pinned away to come closer to the bust so you can see it's it's not a straight line that's why this front is not cut on the fold this light bit was less pronounced originally about a quarter of an inch so I just made it deeper and I know that by trying it on with the muslin <laughs> now the facings have changed to only for the front this facing for the back doesn't change at all the fact that I've raised this doesn't really modify anything it keeps the same shape so that is unchanged but this one totally changed this is the original one and it just yeah it's not the same shape anymore the other thing that I don't understand is why if there was a slight curve there this is meant to be cut on the fold the facing is not gonna lie right and actually now that I've made this curve even more pronounced I cannot have a facing that's cut on the fold so I've made another one and I've just copied the same shape, I've got the slant there, I've got the same shape here. You know, it's keeping the same length of the facing to match the one on the back. It's just got a different shape now and this will have a seam in the middle as will the dress there to address that coming closer to the bust over there. About the position of the straps, they will be close to this edge here on the front. On the back, I know I wanted them closer to the edge, like to where my arm is over here. So the original marks are there. I've moved them over like about half an inch. You know, these are things that you can adjust when you try it on anyway. So I won't worry myself about that too much. This pattern as a top has the potential to use very little fabric. Uh, this is size F. So up to this size, I think it will fit across the width of this fabric. It's 58 inches wide. This is the selvage here, over there is the fold and the front is not cut on the fold so I have it on that side. The back is over there flipped. So this is the top part of the back. The fabric is non-directional so it doesn't matter. These two pieces here are the facing pieces and the strap is meant to be cut on the grain but I've got it cross grain because I don't really mind. I will be interfacing it so I don't really mind it being in the cross grain for this opportunity if I can get it out of this fabric. These three pieces I will be interfacing them separately doing block fusing. I've pressed my top, this is the center front seam there that has that shaping, that's why there is a seam and I've done the same seam for the facing. So it's all pinned along the edge. Of course before doing anything there is a stay stitch that you can see along the neckline, especially along this arm side. This fabric will distort and stretch out if not. So because I've done that stay stitch and I've blocked fused my facings, everything matches together, nothing has stretched out. Got the side seams matching there. And I know my straps are going to reach this point here. So I'm not worried about that. Now at the back, I have a mark there, a red mark. And that is actually what I tried on the muslin and that is where I would want it to be. So it will be a little bit further out. Then the original mark was a little bit there, but it wasn't covering my bra strap. So I think you can always adjust that little bit to cover what you wear. I'm going to insert the straps in between these two layers, in between the facing and the main, at that red line there and there. So the strap will come from that line this way. I'm going to leave an opening at the front so I can adjust how long I want it to be exactly on my body at a later stage. Um, so I won't be sewing the strap on the front yet. I'll just leave an opening, but I will sew the whole thing on the round with the strap on the back. Rayon is super flimsy and I wouldn't have been happy not interfacing it, although it's not part of the instructions. I think interfaced is just more stable. I've sewn it together with 3 8 seam allowance, flipped it, and I've pressed it so that the seam is sort of in the middle. So this is what, what will be seen of the strap and this is what is going to touch my body. I prefer that than having one seam on a side there. I just think that's annoying, so I did that. I've trimmed off all the excess of these straps. It is quite a lot. It's about four inches, I would say, the same amount on both sides. So I have it coming out through there. There's the facing. 
there's the main fabric and I've just gone ahead and put it through the little opening I had left you can see I'd sewn up to there and then I'd left a piece open there and then I still have some sewing there so I just put it in there using the same seam allowance I'm using everywhere and it's nicely tucked in the edge of the strap is right against that seam there and I've done the same with this other side it's just coming out there and into there and now just complete that little area here on the front and then I can turn it right sides out and understitch I have already snipped the arm side curve there here I have a red one and it's wrong sides up you can see the darts there and the center seam this is the front you can see here now I want to leave the facing on the front loose I'm only going to tuck it down on the center front seam of the facing to there just to keep it there but the front I don't want to top stitch it down I think it's just too much and on rayon it doesn't really look that nice so I'm not going to do that. Now I have cut a piece of elastic that will go at the back and as reference and what has worked when I've tried this on the other one was that this is the width of the front so there's a seam there and the other seam there so I'm just using that as a reference and that will be what the elastic will go in at the back. You can see the back is wider it goes out there and there it's much wider than the front so that will bring it in. We're looking at the back now. What I'm going to do is just sew the back bit so that it forms a casing for the elastic. So I'm going to sew from that seam across to the other seam and I have hand basted that down so I don't have pins annoying me. <laughs> My elastic is an inch and a quarter wide. It will fit there nicely. I will be sewing it an inch and a half just to give it some wiggle room. My sewing machine has several marks there and there's one that marks one and a half inches there so that's what I'm guiding the edge here and I'm going to start right on that seam there okay there you can see where the casing starts this will be left open like that I've got my elastic and I've put a safety pin at the tip and I'm just going to push it through with the help of the safety pin. And I'm going to push it just enough to have that bit of elastic just come over the seam there so I can sew it down. There, you can see the elastic coming forward a little bit. And I'm going to stitch this down from the right side so I can sew right in that seam there. So this is like stitching in the ditch but without actually using the special foot. I just used my regular presser foot and just made sure the seam was in there. So you can't see the seam, it's tucked right in there. Now on the other side I'll just keep pushing the elastic through so that it comes out through this side. Okay here it's come out and I'll just make it protrude a little bit, same like that. So I can catch it into that seam there. Okay, so the elastic is secured there and secured on the other side. And you can see it creates slight gathering at the back, not excessive. I think it's enough gathering. I wouldn't want this to be any tighter than this already is. And I have tried it on my body with another version I made. So I'm quite confident that using the length of the front is a good idea. I filmed some footage about how the non-wearable muslin fits me in terrible blue fabric I've been using to make fake pants. <laughs> I've been using that fabric for everything. And also how my first wearable muslin came out because the first version I decided to make after adjusting the pattern was still an experiment for me. So I chose a fabric I still loved but it was still an experiment, so it wasn't my favorite favorite, although I still like it. I had high hopes it was gonna turn out like I wanted it to, and I did film some footage of how this was feeding the non-wearable muslin and the wearable muslin, and that footage is in a separate video that is on Patreon. For the ladies that joined me there on Saffron and Orchid Tears, you can watch that video there. I wanted to take a second to thank everyone that has joined my Patreon page. I'm very, very happy to share more things with you over there, more sewing content and you just keep me on my toes and motivated and I'm very very grateful for your support 
and for all the happiness. Okay, so I will show you my wearable muslin. This is the second one I made. I'm not counting the non-wearable one because that was never intended to be a garment. But this one, I was really hoping it would work out. And I made it with this fabric. This is just 100% rayon, super lightweight and flowy. Just a really small leftover I had from a dress I made my mom last year, the Kalispell dress from Itch to Stitch. So I had done some pattern Tetris on that dress to make sure I had an amount that was enough for a little garment like this. It's very short as you can see, super love it. And when I tried it on, I was so excited because I really loved the style on me and the adjustments I made to this area here were actually giving me the cover that I wanted, the one that I am comfortable with. And at the back too, the back has an elastic in there, but it's not excessive gathering there, but it's not tight either. So you can wiggle around and move. I didn't have much fabric to play with and work out a better fabric placement for the seam on the center right there. This is how it looks inside. The facing is just surged on the edge, interfaced of course. And you know, the instructions said that you had to fold under that facing and then top stitch it all the way around. And I know that type of top stitching looks really nice in linen, but I'm not working with linen and top stitching rarely looks good on a rayon, rarely. So I only sewed down the facing at the back for functional reasons because that facing is actually the casing for the elastic. So that's that. There you can see the seam of the strap that I've left it in the center and on the wrong side of the top so it's against my skin and the strap that you see on the outside is all smooth and there's no seams on the edge which is something I I've never liked actually. So I would call this muslin number two. I was really hoping this one was gonna fit as I thought after making the pattern adjustments. I made a non-wearable muslin first to just confirm how much I wanted to change here around this area and this was made out of scraps I had left over from a dress I made my mom last year. I really love the print, it's just 100% rayon, it's super lightweight, super flowy. This one is shorter because I just used the fabric I had, so the pattern adjustments I made to lengthen it and curve it a little bit are not on this version, but this is still very, very wearable. Um, I still always wanted to confirm the length of the straps again after doing the neckline adjustments. And I've just got it here with a fitted pencil skirt, stretch denim. And it's nice and boxy and loose and flowy. So I did have some issues with pattern placement. I do have some flowers around the bust area, but I think they sort of spread out. I don't think it's that notorious, but yeah, there are some flowers there. And I have a flower cut in half with parts of another flower and it looks like one flower there totally not intentional the seam there I just did it normal I didn't highlight it with top stitching or anything because it's just a seam in a print you won't see it taking it in there really hugs my upper chest area really well and I've got all the cover here that I want and that I'm happy to wear and be comfortable while still being fresh and having a lot of my back exposed and my arms and you know when it's really hot you know this fabric is perfect for it I would not want to make this with a stiffer fabric. For more structured fabrics, I would make a design similar to this, but I would have it have princess seams and be fitted in here so it doesn't do this. You know, I would have to do another pattern if I wanted a fitted cami style. But for these fabrics, this is awesome and I really like it. But when I tried this on for the first time to adjust the straps, I, oh my gosh, I was so excited. And that's why the obsession came in to cut a few more because I really like the fit. I like this square neckline like this that is visual because of the straps. And I like the depth of it. It's very, very nice for me. And I, I know I'm gonna make so many of these and it's a style that I really, really like. And it takes away part of the adjustment that you sometimes need to do with styles that don't have the elastic at the back, where you really need it to fit your body. And you know, it's just, just so much easier this way and so nice. <laughs> I love this, I really love it. So I went on a little cutting spree after making this one and loving it. I made all of these three garments in one day. And now with this one, I actually used 
part of some fabric I have and I did do that little curved hem modification I made to the pattern which is not going to make it look curved but because it is swing style you can't just have a straight hem or else it's not going to lie right on the body. This is rayon twill. This is a fabric I mentioned was heavier weight but still lovely and drapey and I think this would be perfect for a dress version and you know black is extremely hard to show and to see. Uh, I did decide to make a feature of that center front seam there by pressing it open and top stitching it down. It's the same as all the others. Now because I already knew exactly the length that my strap needed to be from making the black and white version where I was still adjusting the length of the strap to fit this modified neckline, I didn't have to do that with this. I could just sew the straps right on cut them at the exact amount, leave the little seam allowance. I could sew the facing with the straps sandwiched in between in the front and the back and just sew it all around. So this one was very much faster and easier to sew than the previous one. The facing, I've just decided to tack it down there with some hand sewing on the front and just leave it loose. I think it just looks better like that. And this type of facing that curves over the bust is the type of facing I prefer I don't like it when the facings are a bit longer and finish like right across and cut the bust in half. So for me, this facing is perfect and it'll be either this type of facing or just full length that hits sort of the waist and then turns into a lining. Those are the two options that I like. You can see my top, it hits mid hip. I like this length for a flowy top like this. I wouldn't want it any longer or shorter. I know a lot of people like swing tops that are really short so they can show off uh, details on the waistband of their pants and skirts and things but I like the look of that but it, I, I don't really feel comfortable doing that so this is what I like. It's very very loose. I would always pair it with something fitted at the bottom, either fitted pants or a fitted skirt like this. I wouldn't want to wear this with a like voluminous type skirt. Uh, you can see the wind is actually blowing so it's nice and flowy. And the back, it looks like that, very swingy, it's very comfortable. You make it with a fabric that drapes like this, it won't look boxy. Up closer, you can see the top, the neckline here is exactly where I want it. The thick straps are shorter and they do cover my bra strap. I have the coverage that I want here. The original dress would have been very low, it would have just yeah, it would have just shown too much for what I'm comfortable with and these are adjustments that can be made and at the back you can't see my strap, my bra strap is way down here it, you would have seen it if I'd made it originally and the straps cover my bra at the back, nice cover the amount of elastic there is comfortable, it's not pulling or like making it feel tight at the back but it's just enough to bring it in and be super comfortable around this area so for sure I might be obsessed with this pattern that's why I've made it so many times I have cut out another one I didn't have time to sew but I will it is a fast sew you can see here there is a shape here and it's because our bodies have a shape we're not straight and that's why this isn't cut on the fold if this was cut on the fold I think it would suit a smaller chest that doesn't have this pronounced curve like this that much but at least for me I did need to bring that in a little bit more quarter of an inch take it in there just so it hugs my chest and it's not gaping here at the front um, but I love that there's a seam there where you can adjust that to sew solid so that's why I made a black one I know it'll be a staple and yeah and then I made red of course <laughs> so I had a little piece of rayon regular rayon it's so soft and buttery you would not oh it's just so nice and so fresh for this weather and maybe with this one you can see more details maybe here you can see the side bust starts they are very angled and they were even more angled even more to the top I sort of dropped the angle a bit while keeping the height right there and you know, I ended up dropping the darts by one and three quarter inches, which is not typical for me. But it's basically got to do with the neckline modification as well, because I wanted it higher. It's a combination of both things. If I'd sewn it like the original, I would have had a yeah, 
totally not me, my bust at all. So that's our always game for being changed. Um, they are always up for changing, in my opinion. <laughs> I've also top stitched the front there just to make it a highlight and not make it look strange, like it's not supposed to be there. It is supposed to be there. And at the back, we have that lovely gathering that I think this fabric shows it best. Not excessive. I think it looks nice from the back and it's so, so nice to wear. Here is the red one and I've just got a fitted pencil skirt, stretch denim, super comfortable. Denim goes with everything and especially with red, I really like it. Just as flowy as the black one. This one is actually just 100% rayon, so it's lighter weight. Still very flowy, very drapey and very appropriate for this design that's sort of, you know, big around here. Maybe here you can actually see I have decided to top stitch that center seam just to make it a feature and to highlight it so it doesn't look strange. I did press the seams open and top stitched on each side. I don't like the look of doing it on one side and making it look like a, a fake flat felt seam because then it looks off centered all the time. So I've done that and it's just a really dreamy red top. I love it. Maybe with this one you can see the gathers on the elastic a bit more. I know I'm gonna be wearing this one a lot. It's red, I absolutely love it. I made it with so little fabric. I uh, just love the result. The straps for all these are interfaced, of course. They do need that structure, I think, at least for this type of fabric. If I made this with linen, maybe I wouldn't. Depends on the weight of the linen, but I think a good strap needs to be interfaced. I think so. Maybe with the red version, you will see the dart right there. It's slanted, it starts there and it slants up and it is at my apex after doing all those adjustments. So I'm happy with that dart placement there. Super happy. might wonder why does this design have that annoying front seam you know front seams are not annoying <laughs> and it depends on the way the pattern was drafted whether they can incorporate shaping there now I'm just going to show you um, if you look at me sideways I'm not flat of course there is a bulge here of course the bust and so when you have fabric across this area there is a little curve right there like that and so if you have a style with princess seams like this one this is a celeste dress from each to stitch that i've shown you a few days ago this one has princess seams from there and so that is what gives it the shape across this area of the body in this case this design starts right there and if this design had absolutely no seams it would just stick out here like coming from here it would just gape and stick out like that and i think the larger the bust the more it will gape these patterns are drafted for a b cup i am a c cup so i always knew i was going to need a little bit more shaping there and that's why i pinched out about a quarter of an inch extra right there to just have it shape my bust on that seam and fit me and not gape so that's why you see that all these camis really hug the upper chest and I really like that. I like having that seam there because it allows you to correct that fit there when the design is simple and you don't have princess seams or any other place where you can achieve that shape there. So it is necessary, it is important. I am very, very happy with these. I have a fourth one cut out that I did not have time to sew, but I will sew it. I am so happy with this. If I had a week, I would sew like 10 of these for sure in every single color, because I know it's a style I'm going to wear. I feel covered up. I don't feel like I'm showing anything. I can move my arms around and not show my bra. I'm not showing my strap there. At the back, I'm confident with the amount of skin my back is showing as well. It's nothing that I'm not comfortable with. Now, I have seen that some people wear these designs as pinafore styles and they wear a t-shirt or something else underneath. And that sort of solves the problem of them being low cut. But, you know, we sew. We are perfectly able to go and make some more changes to patterns to get them to fit the way that we want to. In my case, layering things and putting another dress on top is not really the, what I'm looking for. It's just too hot for that. And it's not a style that I really enjoy that much either. 
to have like a t-shirt and a dress on top not even in the 90s ladies I've never done that look so I'm very 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 happy with this I hope you go and get this pattern for yourself it could be the perfect summer top with cover with nice coverage and you can make the adjustments that you need for your body just go and make a non-wearable muslin with scraps to figure out what you need how taller you want it to be on your body and make it it's lovely and I highly recommend I wanted to let you know about something that's happening this weekend the 31st and the 1st so 31st is Friday the 1st is Saturday there is a flash sale at Love Notions it will be for those two days only and the discount on the sale will be site-wide and the biggest discount ever 50% so go ahead and make your wish list on the website you know if you've been looking at patterns that you've been liking go ahead and make your wish list so that you know and you're ready for that day because 50% off is a huge sale the reason this flash sale is happening is because it's a celebration because Love Notions is growing and Tammy the owner has been able to lease office space so she's moved from her home and is going to have a really beautiful workshop where she can work and have more space and she's got a lot of exciting plans for this place you know if you're local to the area in Michigan it will be a really nice place to visit soon so this flash sale is celebrating that 50% off on Friday and Saturday look out for that make your wish list and you can always use my affiliate link because I make a small commission if you buy during the sale I hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed it give it a like don't forget to subscribe to the channel and tap on the bell so you don't miss out when new videos go live always practical sewing content here for you that I make with all my love thank you so much bye